Mm, what you got there, Mr. Bergman? Oh, Pop Tarts. Totally unhealthy food for the triathlete. Mm, I know. Yeah. I, I like Pop Tarts. Do you? Yeah. Mm. Are you going to share your Pop Tarts? I have food in my mouth. What are you talking about? I, are you going to share your Pop Tarts? No. Why not? You see, it's like but, a, it's a limiting. It's limiting you from uh, excessive caloric intake. But I like Pop Tarts. Well, but it'll make you fat. Mm. You don't exercise enough. So yeah, but, it's limiting you from your calories. But they're chocolate. I know. That's they're my favorite. Really good. It's kind of like my weakness. So, yeah. Well, uh -huh. well I'm going to limit him from his caloric intake. So. Yeah, somehow I think this is supposed to segue into our uh, what we're teaching today, isn't it? Well, why, why are you teaching? Oh, limiting reactant. Hey, it's on the oh, top of our head right I up see. here. Limiting reactant, so Mr. Sams doesn't get the pop tart. Mm. <laughs> so we're talking about limiting reactants, guys. Hey, limiting reactants. Here's like the rules. Oh no, not rules. That's next. This is what they are. This is what they are. Hey, limiting reactant is a chemical that is used up in a reaction. Yeah. So um, you know, in most reactions, we have something added to something else. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then uh, it's the one that gets completely used up, meaning you start with it, and then there's no more left in the end. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, and then its cousin is the excess reactant. Clausen, I got the Clausen. Yeah, that's the one that's left over when we're done. Okay, got the Clausen. Okay. Yeah. Now, one other word you might see this, uh, you may see these called as limiting reagent or excess reagent. It's the same thing. Don't get confused. Uh, we will usually refer to them as limiting reactants. However. There you go. Okay. Okay. So. To solve these problems, you need to um, follow these rules. Yeah. So, hey, you need to copy these down. Yeah, we're not going to read them to you. Copy them down. You're going to learn um, how we use these here in just a minute. So, pause the video and yes. copy them down. Okay? Hey, so to completely understand that, we're going to use a bike analogy. Yeah, more with the bike again. Yeah, so um, we're going to take a field trip to my garage. And in my garage, I'm going to, or I might be on my deck. I don't know. Well, I'm going to do it here tonight, but I'm going to help us to understand the concept of limiting and excess reagents, okay? All right. All right, today I want to talk about limiting reactants and bicycles. Bicycles? Well, you know I love bikes. So I brought some of my bikes. I actually have more. I know this is sick, or actually my family does. Now, let's see if we can figure out um, bikes. Now, how many bike frames do I have? Here I have one, my race bike, two, my son's bike, three, my uh, road bike, and four, my wife's bike, okay? Now, we've also got... Wheels. Now, as you know, the recipe to make a bike is you have one bike plus two wheels. Now, below is a bunch of wheels. So let's count our wheels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven wheels. So I have eleven wheels and four bikes. How many bikes can I make or bike frames? Well, the recipe is two wheels plus one frame makes one bike. But I have four frames, and I have 11 wheels. How many can I make? Well, you know what? I'm going to make the bikes, and then we're going to see how many I make. Well, as you can see, I've made my bikes. I got the one, a two, a three, a four bikes. And what have I got? I've also got some wheels left over. And I'll bet you did the math, but there are three wheels left over. Well, you see the bike frames, these are called the limiting reactants, the chemical or the substance that you ran out of first. I ran out of bike frames first, and then I had too many wheels. So the wheels are the excess reagent. You know what I need to do? I need to go for a bike ride. Well, here I am riding my bicycle, getting uh, getting ready for the race. As you can see, the limiting reaction was the bike frame. The excess reactant was the wheels. I had three wheels left over, and I completely used up my bicycle friends. And I made four bikes, and I had some real wheels are left over, right? I used up eight wheels. Hey, no, no hands. I had used up eight wheels and had three wheels left over. We'll see you in class. Bye bye, I got the work out, so watch me work out, okay? Hey, how'd that work for you, Mr. That's Sims? pretty cool. You need to clean your garage. Yeah, well, it is kind of dirty. Kind of messy. Yeah, well, you know how it goes. So, hey, let's do some examples with actual chemicals instead of bike parts. Okay. So, hey, okay, so let's say we've got here. All right, what have we got here? 
Hey, first thing you got to start with the balanced chemical equation. Yes, you know you all do. these things. Get balanced equation. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Hey, whoa! Well, there's a the balanced equation right there. You know, we were nice. We decided to give you the balanced equation the first time, so you don't have to write it out. Yeah, we'll not always be that. Nice. No, we'll be mean later. Okay. So what do you write, what do you do? You write down like what uh, you know what underneath. You know, right, what exactly. you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got 20 grams of mercury. 20.0 gram. And we got five gram of oxygen. So five point zero zero. And now, something, okay. something important to say, guys, is that the grams, not necessarily the grams, but the amounts are both of reactants. Mm -hmm. There are no um, amounts of products, since it is called a limiting reactant problem. So if you see two numbers of reactants, you are most likely dealing with a limiting reactant mm -hmm. problem. Yep. I would say 99 times out of 100. If you're given both, it's a limiting reactant problem. Yes, and probably in this class, it would be 100. 100%. Out of 100. That's but yeah, yeah. yeah, there are some exceptions, but we're not going to uh, face that in this class. So calculate the maximum amount in grams of mercury oxide or HGO. So I'm going to write a G question mark. Okay. So, you know, guys, this is really easy. We've yeah. done this before. Yeah. We just need to do two of them. Yes, you just do it twice. You do one stoichiometry line with uh, one reactant, and you do another stoichiometry so line. So I'm going to convert the grams other. of mercury, right. the 20 grams, to grams of mercury mm -hmm. oxide, and then I'm going to convert grams of oxygen to grams of mercury oxide, and then I'm going to find which answer gives me the smallest. lowest answer, the yeah. smallest answer, mm -hmm. and the smallest answer wins. Right, that's the one that tells you what your limiting reactant is and what the actual amount will be. Now why is that, Mr. Sands? Uh, because the one that gives you the larger number number, um, you're, you're never going to be able to make that much because the one that gives you the smallest number gets used up first. Yeah. Once it's all gone, there's no more stuff to react. Right. Think of the bicycle analogy that yeah. you just saw in my garage. Once all the parts were done, we had let, yeah. Yeah, once you've used up the one that you have the least number of, of things of, even though you have leftovers others, you can't make any more bikes. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's do this problem. Let's right. 20 point zero grams of HG over 1. So this is just a gram-gram problem. We've done this before, right, Mr. Yep, yep. So grams of HG, 1 mole of HG. This is easy. The molar mass, we don't even have to like figure it out. We just look on the table. Yeah, it's 200.6. That's just the atomic mass of the atom of mercury. Yep. And then we'll say 2 moles of HG to 2 moles of HGO. So you're getting lots of practice on these gram-gram mm -hmm. problems. The, I should probably say the grams of mercury cancel, now the moles of mercury cancel. Yep. And then I'm going to say one mole of HGO is uh, so many grams of HGO. Yep, 216.6. 216.6. The grams of H, moles of HGO cancel, pardon me, and we get an answer when we take all the things on top divided by the bottom. I'm going to say like 24. 21.6. 21. Oh, yeah, 21.6 grams of HGO. Now we have to do this again. Now, one of the kind of the pains of the butts of these problem guys is that you just have to like become like the stoichiometry king. So or queen. Or queen, yeah, whatever. All right, so are you the queen or am I the queen? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, so we got grams of oxygen to one mole of oxygen. I don't even need a periodic table for that one. Nope. That's 32. 32. Don't put 16, it's a diatomic molecule. Oh, two. And then we're gonna say, um, one mole of O2. That one comes from the balanced equation right there. And two moles of HGO. Nice thing I, we have. That's an O. Like a six. Is that what that is? Yeah, 216. This hey, last uh, fraction it. is going to be the same because we're converting to the same deal. So that's the one thing that kind of gets the same. Mr. Sam is furiously calculating. And I'm going to get 10, one third. Mm. It's going to be a smaller number, isn't it? Mm, no, this is the bigger number. Okay, all right. 67.7. 67.7 grams of HGO. So that means, now let's look at these numbers. If I start with 20 grams of HG, I can produce 21 grams of HGO. If I start with 5 grams of O2, I can produce 67. How much can I can produce? The smallest one. Only the smallest one. Okay. It's this number. Right so here. that makes the eight, the 20 grams of HG are limiting reactant. Very important to understand that. That makes HG, yes, the limiting reactant, the one that you're going to run out of. Now, now it's not the HGO that's the limiting. That's the product. Right. Now, let me ask you this, Mr. Berkman. How can I start with 20 grams of mercury and 5 grams of oxygen, but the one I have more grams of 
that gets used up first. That doesn't make sense to me. Well, it actually comes down to the molar mass here of the mercury. It weighs 200, where this weighs 32. So that means I actually have less number of moles of magnesium than oxygen. Now, does the, plus, the mole ratio takes, uh, plus, exactly. take that into account, too? Plus, I use up twice as much of the, magne of the mercury mm -hmm. um, uh, per uh, in the recipe as I do of the oxygen. So okay. we kind of have two things going against right. us. Less moles and the fact that you need twice as much moles of mercury. Right, so don't be fooled by the smaller number of grams of oxygen that grams do not determine the limiting reactant. You must go through and do the math first exactly. to figure out which one's limiting. Okay. I think